Concepts and Definitions of Governance Art of Governing Good evening everyone, I am Cassandra F. Estrada. So let's proceed with the definitions of governance. So ano nga ba ang governance? Governance is the act or process of governing or overseeing the control and direction of something such as country or an organization. So it means um, ito yung mismong process ng pamamahala ng isang tao or isang um, isang departamento sa isang organization or country. So for example, here in our country, di ba we have our own government and uh, we have our own governance kung paano ba pamahalaan ng ating um, ng ating leader or mga departamento ang ating um, bansa. So, they govern by providing um, peace and order dito sa ating bansa. Siyempre, providing public services and the public security or economic security. So, isa na din doon yung um, isa na din doon yung pag implement ng mga so, pag implement ng mga principles and rules and regulations para maging maayos ang isang bansa. So, bakit nga ba importante ang governance? So, katulad nga ng sinabi ko kanina, kapag wala tayong governance, magiging magulo ang bansa natin. Kung wala tayong mga rules and regulations, maaaring gawin na ng ibang tao yung mga gusto lang nilang gawin. For example, wala pa lang um, wala pa lang law or walang ini-implement na rules na bawal pumatay, bawal magnakaw, de ba? So, ang tendency niyan is um, gagawin na ng mga tao yung mga gusto lang nilang gawin. That's why um, that's why governance is really important. La, may saying nga dito na Greatness can be achieved when good principles and practices are applied throughout the whole organization or throughout the whole country. There are types of governance. Governance depends on the type or nature of the organization's work. Their governance is also different because of the differences in their activities. Below are some of the types of governance mentioned. The first type is democratic governance. Democratic governance ensures the participation of citizens in the process of policy making and its implementation. Participation can be through election, referendum, local self-governance, protests, or etc. The second type is global governance. This is one of the most relevant types of governance. The term global governance was first used by Rosno. He argues that global governance is conceived to include system of rule at all levels of the human activity from the family to the international organization in which the pursuit of goals through the exercise of the control has transitional repercussions. The third type is good governance. Good governance is the ATL concept or normative concept. This concept is born when ethics, values are included in the discussion of governance. Now, the question is, when will we call any governance as good governance? When governance is characterized by participation, rule of law, transparency, responsiveness, conscious oriented, equity and exclusiveness, effectiveness and efficiency, accountability, then we call it good governance. The fourth type is corporate governance. Today, corporate governance is a buzzword of a corporate boardroom across the world. Corporate governance is a set of rules or code of conduct for the corporate sector or corporate governance. By corporate governance, the government can regulate the corporate companies. Every company has to follow those rules or code 
of conduct to start their business in a particular state or region. The fifth one is environmental governance. It provides explanations of ways that can be implemented in the development of international environmental regulations, development of environmental science and information, and sustainable development and implementation policies in line with national policy. And the last type of governance, the e-governance. Application of information and communication technologies in the process of governance gave birth of the idea of e-governance. E-governance or electronic governance is a modern initiative to make the governing process more transparent and accountable. Its goal is to use technology for the greater good of society. Good evening everyone. Uh, I'm Zeus Eli. Then this is my report. The next topic is the concept of governance. In most dictionaries, government and governance are interchangeable use, both denoting the exercise of authority in an organization, institution, or states. Government is the name given to the entity. Exercising that authority, authority can most simply define as legitimate power, whereas power is the ability to influence the behavior of behavior of others. Authority is the right to do so. Authority is therefore the based on an acknowledged duty to obey rather than on any form of coercion or manipulation. Weber distinguished between three kinds of authority based on the different grounds upon Obedience can be established. Traditional authority is rooted in history. Charismatic authority stems from personality and legal authority is grounded in a set of impersonal rules. To study government is to study the exercise of authority. <coughs> government is closely related to politics. So, concept of governments. Sinasabi sa concept of governments ay ang gobyerno at pamamahala daw ay magkapalitan magkapalitan sa paggamit tapos magkapalitan na ginagamit sa paggamit tapos parehas silang nagsasad ng otoridad authority sa isang organization institution o estado at sa pangalawang binigay na at sa pangalang binigay sa entity na gumagamit ng authority ay pamahalaan pamahalaan Ang authority ay pwede rin pinakasimpleng tukuyin bilang lehitimong kapangyarihan ngunit makaka-influensya ito sa ugali ng iba. Ang authority ay ang karapatang gawin ito, gawin ito. Sa mga tuwid ay batay sa pagkilala sa tungkulin sumunod sa kahit anong pamimilit o pagmamanipula. Weber naman ay nakilala sa tatlong uri ng authority sa iba't ibang batayan ng pagsunod. Ang traditional na author, author, authoridad o authority ay ang kasaysayan. Charismatic na nagmumula sa personalidad ay authority rin. Ang legal na author, authority naman, ang legal na authority naman ay nakabatay sa impersonal na tuntunin. Pinag-aaralan ng pamahalaan ang paggamit sa authority at nag-uugnay ang pamahalaan sa politika. Yun lamang po. And meron pa pong next, next reporter please. Thank you. The concept of governance. To study politics is insist to study government or more broadly to study the exercise of authority. Politics is the art of government, the exercise of control within the society through the making and enforcement of collective decision. So, uh, politics, alam naman natin lahat yon isang um, pag-aaral um, katungkol sa ating gobyerno to control, to balance, or to maintain na maging maayos yung isang country and to have a authority kasi sa mga may power lang at may mga authority lang ang pwedeng makagawa ng isang decision or to make a law, rules, and regulation. So the real of politics is restricted to state actors who are consciously motivated by ideological beliefs and who seek to advance them through membership of a formal organization such a political organization 
this is the sense in which politicians are described as a political. So, um, Haywood um, inspired or motivated by geological beliefs. It is a set of opinion or beliefs of a group or individual that characterize a particular culture, capitalism, socialism, and the institution of the state, the apparatus of the government, the court, the police, the army, the social security system, and so forth, can be regarded as public in the sense that they are responsible for the collective organization of the community life. Moreover, they are funded at the public expenses out of taxation and contrast civil society consists of what Raymond Brooke called the little platoons. Um, from the word public, uh, they focus in public, uh, in our community to become a better life. And ayan yung mga examples sa mga nag-work and may mga responsible sa mga community natin. The police, the army, um, the court, especially the government. So the next is about the private businesses trade unions, club, community group, and so on that are private in the sense that they are set up and funded by individual citizens. On the basis of this public or private life division, government is restricted to the activities of the state itself and the responsibilities were, which are properly, ex, proper, properly exist, exercised by public bodies. Um, the, the the difference between the public and the private is the public sector provides um, provides services to a public okay. the private sector focuses the interest the of a individual organization of their stakeholder so public groups or madami maramihan um, pag private um, individual lang po siya Good evening everyone, I am Candy Domingo, Group 5. Um, the concept of governance. One of its crucial implications is that it broadens our notion of the government, transferring the economy, in particular from the private to public realm. Ang uh, sinasabi dito na ang konsepto ng politika at pamahalaan natin ay patuloy o umiiral pa rin sa ating bansa. Hanggang sa tinatawag na natin itong uh, public life o public affairs. Uh, dahil nga ang government natin ay hindi gumagawa ng mga decision na para sa lahat. At ang civil society at ang private sectors uh, ay merong mga mahalagang kinagampan ng tungkulin sa ating uh, community. Uh, kaya ang kaulugan ng governance. Ang governance ay isang malawak na parirala o parang isang maliit lamang na sangay ng government. Um, ito ay tumutukoy sa iba't ibang paraan kung saan ang social life ay pinag-ugnay sa pinaka -ma malawak na itong ano, kaulugan. At ay maaaring ituring na isa sa mga institusyon ng governance and sinasabi nga dito na ang governance ay maaaring umiral o maaaring magkaroon kahit na walang government. Yun lamang po. Thank you. Good day everyone, this is Sarame A. Aliada and I'm going to discuss what is the art of governing. So first, to govern is to exercise the authority, the power over a territory, a system, or organization. So, ano nga ba itong art of governing? So, when we say art of governing, in order to govern, we have to exercise the power and authority over or in a society. So, this applies both to government and governance. So, ano nga bang pagkakaiba ng government and governance? When we say government, ito, this is the name given into entity na sila yung nagpapatupad, sila yung nag implement who is exercising the power and authority sa isang society. And when we say governance, ito yung sinusunod ng nasa government. This is, ito yung pamamaraan, pamamalakad na sinusunod 
ng nasa position. So, the exercise of authority is uppermost in government and remains significant in governance. Bakit? Kasi, the power in governance is not so much wielded as shared and authority is defined not so much by control of the ruler. Aminin man natin nung hindi, mas controlling ang government kesa sa governance. Yung nagpapatupad, the authority, who is holding the authority, the government, is so much more controlling than the government, than the governance itself. So, sabi dito, to control is not to manage. Minsan kasi, in order to manage an organization, you have to control your people. But according to Landau and Stout maintained in a classic article, to control is not to manage. We have not found a definition of government that uses control instead of management. Kasi, controlling assumes a law, but to manage is to act a hypothesis. Sa controlling kasi, to control is to direct what each part of the system must do. Parang, yung controller knows the goals and is certain how an action. This is what the government does. Pero, sa governance, governance chooses management over control kasi yung sistema ng management is permeable, admits outside the influences, and assumes no omnipotence or omniscience on the part of the decision maker and the subject's decisions to the evaluation and critic of all those with a stick in them. Governance implies leadership toward societal development. While government, it, yung government is only interested in maintenance of preserving peace and order.